Hello, hello, and welcome to Learn Redstone with me. I'm your host, Blends. Let's get started. All right, so Redstone. It is some tricky stuff if you've never really dealt with it before, and it's super intimidating to see, like, people, like, huge Redstone contraptions and do these funky things. And, yeah, I, I've never really messed with it before. Actually, within the last few months, I kind of started getting into it. And I started learning by just kind of messing with it a little bit, and then I would go watch some tutorials. And uh, some people's tutorials, like some of them are, are very suggested to go watch, um, that they're, they kind of like skip a lot of the extremely basic stuff, and they explain it so fast that I just, I, I didn't know what was happening. And I got even more scared, and then I started to cry, and then I just stopped playing, stopped messing with it. But yeah, that's not at all true. Well, a little bit true. Um, but I'm going to do a series where I very much go into the basics of it and explain everything from, you know, the, the very, very simplest things. And then we're going to go ahead and learn it together and make some uh, complicated contraptions and stuff like that. So if you want to follow along, I suggest you make your own world. Just go into single player, hit create new world. I'm going to go ahead and call this one Learn Redstone with me. All right. I'm going to go into creative mode here. And then you go into more world options. On world type, hit default and then customize under super flat. And we're gonna hit presets down at the bottom and we're gonna do this redstone ready. That one is super important because um, there's not gonna be a whole lot of mob spawning, um, like pigs and cows and stuff like that. None of that's gonna get in there and it's super easy to work with. And so yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and use that, that pre preset, hit done. I'm gonna turn off generated structures because I don't want any villages and stuff like that to show up. And obviously uh, cheats have gotta be on. We're gonna hit done, make sure this is all correct and go ahead and start a new world. All right, once the world loads in, one thing I like to do first is I like to stop the daylight cycle from going. So you just put the uh, backslash and then type game rule, and you can hit tab when you get partly done there, and do day daylight cycle. And then I'm gonna turn it to false, that way it never turns to night. I'm also going to do game rule, do weather cycle, because I don't want storms to start happening in false. And then I'm gonna set time set to noon. Just like that. And now the sun is going to be directly above us. Never going to get dark. There's no storms ever going to happen. And one thing I also like to do is put this to peaceful if you're planning on not having any mobs spawn. If it does end up going tonight or you switch it tonight or whatever, a bunch of mobs are going to be around here. But turning that to peaceful turns that off. All right, let's get into the redstone. This is redstone ore. Now this can be found in, in the overworld and levels Y0 through Y16. That is the same levels that diamonds are found. So when you go looking for diamonds, you're probably gonna find quite a bit more redstone than you do diamonds. This is a redstone dust. Uh, this is your basic component for all redstone because it's, you know, it's, it's called redstone. So <laughs> it's very important. You can kind of think of this as wiring. It's just like that, all right? Um, when you put power to one of these blocks, it'll actually light up and go down the string like this. See how all those have changed now? They've all got a signal coming out of them. If I hit that, none of these have a signal coming out anymore. Okay, so we're going to talk about the torch next. Redstone torch is just basically, redstone torch is just, uh, it's a power source. So when this is touching something that has redstone, it will actually power the redstone. If it's on a block, it will power the block. Let's put a block on top of it here. Oops. Whoops. There we go. So the block is on top of that redstone. If I put one up here, it's actually going to power that redstone, all that kind of stuff. You can put redstone on the sides of blocks as well, or redstone torches, I mean, on the side of blocks as well. You can put it there, and this block is now not powered, but the block above it will be powered. But this one right here will be powered because it's also going into that block there. It gets a little bit confusing, but it does make sense once you figured it out. All right, next is a block of redstone. Now this is just nine redstone dust put together and it forms a block. Now what this is, is a power source that, uh, just like the torch, it kind of powers all the blocks around it. There's also a thing right there where it actually powers the block that's directly above it, or directly below it. Like redstone dust is below it, it can go next to it, it can go underneath it, and it's lit right there. This is uh, super useful because this one can also be moved by pistons and sticky pistons, but we'll get to that some other day. Okay, this is a redstone lamp. Now, when this redstone lamp is powered by redstone, it actually lights. So if you do like that, it's just going to light up just like that. That's pretty simple. It's, we're going to use this for all demonstrations on a lot of this stuff today. So just keep that in mind. When that is powered, that is lit up. When it's not powered, it's dark. Okay, redstone power has a signal strength of 15. And what that means is once you start right here, we're going to count this as 15 and go down to zero. Once we hit zero, there's not going to be any more power. So 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 
and this is zero, so there is a signal strength of zero coming out of that. Now if I were to put the redstone lamp right there, it is not powered because it is dark. Now if I were to put the redstone lamp right here, it's getting powered by a redstone signal of one, so it's going to be lit, just like that. Now you got to remember that they, they count starting from 15 from the source. That's important to know, especially for later components like the comparator. So this is a signal strength of 15, and it goes all the way down to 1. And when you get to 0, it's not powered anymore. Next, we're going to talk about a repeater. Now, a repeater basically extends the signal. It kind of starts it over. Now, let's use these uh, redstone lamps as a little, uh, little test thing here. So we're going to put redstone lamps here and here. They're next to the ones that are powered, so those are lit. And these are not going to be lit because they are not powered. So if I were to put a repeater right here, this starts the signal over, and it ended right here, right? So if I start it right there, it's actually going to end it right there instead. There you go, just like that. So this is now, this is 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, right there. Now you can also put one anywhere in here, and it's going to light up all the way just like that. So this just basically extends the signal straight, starting back over at 15. Now you can select different uh, things for this. This are called um, delays, and we'll get into that some other day, but notice that Every one of these is a little bit longer a delay. This one on just one setting also has a very small delay. It's called a one tick delay. That's two ticks, three ticks, and four ticks. But yeah, we'll get into that some other day. Okay, next we're going to talk about the comparator. Now this one is a little trickier. There are two settings for this. This is comparing, a comparative setting and this is subtracting setting. We're just going to talk about really quick both of them real fast. Uh, I'm probably going to have an entire episode just on the comparator because this one is a little harder to understand. But what it does is it compares um, signal strength from the back to the signal strength from the side. Now, let's go ahead and put out some dust this way so you can see if it's powered. Just like that. Okay, no power coming from there. If I put a torch right behind it, it's going to power it. That's going to start with 15 and just go all the way down. Now, if I were to put a strong signal on this side, it's not going to power it that way. But if I were to put a weaker signal on this side, which is, this is a 15, this is 14 because there's two of them. Nothing comes out there. Now, if I were to switch this and put this one off, it's going to turn that on. I can put this one out like that and kind of swap them a little bit like that, and it's still going to turn it on. If this is stronger signal than this one's on the side, then it's going to light up down this way. Now, it doesn't start right at 15 here. It starts over like this is, well, I guess it's going to be easier if I do it like this. Get rid of this guy here. So this is 15, 14, 13. This takes this signal and starts that same number right here. So this is also 13. If this is 13, this is 13. Okay. And then subtract mode, it actually takes the signal number from here and it subtracts whichever number is greatest from the side and it's going to output that. Now that is super confusing. Um, I don't really want to get into it on this video because this is the basics, but I will have a video on this just the, red, the uh, comparator in the future. All right, let's move on to the next thing. Okay, so we've got a non-powered line of uh, redstone dust here and then the uh, redstone lamp on the end here. Now, there are several different ways to power this. You can use a redstone torch or block like I showed you earlier. You can use a lever, which is just a switch. It's off now, and now it's on. That's pretty self-explanatory. A button, you press it, it's going to go on, and then when it pops back up, it turns it back off. You have a pressure plate. When you or something else goes on top of it, it's actually going to turn it on until you walk away, and then it'll turn it off. Okay, next we're going to talk about the tripwire. This is a little bit different and actually needs some things on it. Let's see, I'm going to put it right here. So this, we're going to power this block with it. Now if we use a lever, we can power that block and it turns that on. We're going to use a tripwire. So what a tripwire is, you get the hook here and the hook here. These can be, you know, longer. They can be, you know, several blocks in between, but you just need one in between. And then a string. Now you see when, they're, uh, when you add the string to it, it's actually going to move these down. And... When you trip this wire, when you walk past it or anything else goes past it, it's going to trigger that and it's going to light that up. You back off, it turns off, go forward, it trips it. Okay, so other things other than the note block that can be powered by this, it's going to be like a trap door. So when it's powered, the trap door moves, just like that. Do that on the side there. Other than that, you've got the door. It'll open when it's powered. Now, doors are super uh, useful to have powered because you can put a that's the wrong thing. We're going to put a spruce pressure plate in front of it, and when you open it, it opens, so you can just walk right through it, and then when you leave, it closes. I like to use that in all my doors so I don't have to turn around. So I don't have to do this. Open the door, come in, turn around, close the door, and then turn around and keep moving. 
you put the pressure plate in front of it, it'll just open for you. You just walk in, it's already going to close. I almost forgot the fence gate too. It works the same. Okay, let's talk about pistons. So pistons, you can power it. Let's just, I'm going to just do it like this, power it on the side. And when you power it, it's going to extend the piston. And when you take away the power, it moves it back. Now the difference between a regular piston and a sticky piston, actually, let's just go ahead and do it here. We can do it both the same way, just so you can kind of see it a little easier. There you can see both from here, just like that. Now the difference between a regular piston and a sticky piston, if I were to put a block in front of it here and a block in front of this one, when you turn it on, they're both going to push them out. But when I turn it off, they're both going to retract, but this one actually sticks to that block because it's got that slime on there. So it's hence a sticky piston. So it can move things back and forth. This is extremely useful for when you have a, say, a um, redstone block there and something you want to power. You can flip that, and it'll power it on, flip that, and it'll power it off. So this is a nice little switch there. So now let's talk about dispensers and droppers. This one right here is a dropper. This one is a dispenser. They look very similar. The dropper has like the flat mouth. The dispenser has the wide mouth like that. They look a little funny. So this one is the dropper. Now when you put something inside of it, you just right click it. You can put whatever you want to inside it. And when you power it, it's going to spit that block right back out. Now the difference between this one and the dispenser is if you put certain blocks in there, like a water bucket, for instance, when you turn it on, it's actually going to make the water flow. And I just broke my redstone device. That was a smart idea. So yeah, you got to be careful when that happens. And now I can't get rid of this block, this water. This is this is a disaster. There we go. Problem solved. But yeah, the dispenser actually dispenses the item that's in it. Now the, the dispenser can also be used for arrows. So it's a nice thing to, you know, they don't fly very far sometimes. But, oops. But yeah, it's a, it's a nice little defense mechanism you got there. Pick all those up. But yeah, dispensers and droppers do almost the same thing, um, except, yeah, one dispenses it, the other one drops it. Now, the dropper can also put stuff into other droppers. Okay, now, if you have multiple droppers lined up with each other, you can actually drop something from this one into this one, into this one, into this one, just by powering it. So, let's see. There is nothing in any of these right here. So, we're just going to go ahead and put this empty water bucket in there, and we're going to power this one up. So, it's the one on the end. We power it. Now, it's not there. It's in this one. Okay? It just stays in there. Power that one, it drops in there, goes over to that one, and that one goes over to there. And hit it again, and it'll spit out the front. Very, very useful for a lot of builds. Next, let's talk about the observer. When you put it down on the observer, you'll notice a red dot on one side with an arrow pointing towards it, and a face on this side. Now, this face, observe what is happening to the block in front of it, and if it notices a change, it actually puts a redstone signal out the back. So let's show you how this works by just putting this right there, so when I change something, you'll be able to see that that light will, will flash there. Okay, see how that, anytime it changes, it flashes there. Now one thing, let's get a button real quick. When you press a button, it actually gives you two signals because one, well, after it's placed down, if you press it, it's one signal, and when you turn it off, it, or when it turns itself off, it's another signal. See how it does that? Now the, the, uh, this observer just does one tick. Um, that's just one little tiny uh, signal. So every time there's a change, it does, but it doesn't like stay turned on like uh, lever would or something like that. If I put it down a lever and I turn it on, it's just going to flick. But if a lever is powering something else, it's going to either stay on or off. So this just gives a tick, just a pulse. Okay, next we're going to talk about note blocks. Now these are a little weird because they actually put out a different sound with every time you, you put a redstone signal into it. So you hit it and it'll make that. You can actually change it. Let's go up there so it sounds a little better. That was really bassy. See, every time you get a signal to it, it makes that little thump noise. Now, this can work with the observer because every time the observer notices that it changes, oops, I should probably crouch there. Every time the observer notices that it changes, it will flash that light. Okay, and one way to make this silent is to put a solid block on top of there. Now, it won't make that noise anymore, but it still will update the block and the observer can tell. Okay, the next thing we're going to talk about is a hopper. Now, a hopper is a thing that you can actually hold five different stacks of things in there, and it actually transports it to the area that it's pointing to. So now when I put that there, I actually clicked it down into that block there, so you can see that it's actually facing into that one. If I wanted to put it into this block here, you crouch and you put it into that, and you click on it there, and that way you see that little thing is actually facing that way, that means it's going in there. You can do this in any direction you want, just like this. The only thing is you can't go up with these. There's no way to go underneath and click on it because it will actually just show down just like that one. 
uh, that one. <laughs> now hoppers are super useful for transporting items across distances. Now let's just say I put this redstone dust in here. It's going to leave this one pretty much instantly. It's going to go into that one, go into that one, and it's going to end up in this chest. Now you can turn these hoppers off by powering them. So I'm going to get a redstone torch and put it underneath that one. And I'm going to go ahead and take the redstone dust out of there. And I'm going to put it back in here. Now it's going to get stuck right there until that power breaks and it's going to end up right down here. It's not in there anymore. Now there are two different kinds of chests. There are regular chests and there are trap chests. You can just barely tell the difference because this one has a little red on the outside or brown or whatever color that is. And this one's regular. So a regular chest and a trap chest. Now the difference between these is, oops, let me go get that real quick. I'm going to go ahead and put that back down. We're going to demonstrate something here. So on a trap, on a regular chest, if I were to put it up here, as soon as I put something in there, it's going to boop, disappear and it's going to end up in that one right there. Now for a trap chest, go ahead and put that right there. If I open this up and put the redstone in there, it doesn't disappear until I close it. Now it's gone and now it's going to be in that chest there. So that's good for uh, garbage cans and things like that, which we can get into some other day. But yeah, that is a very useful thing to have. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the lectern. Now the lectern does put off a signal just like the observer, kind of, it's just like a pulse. But in order to do that, you have to have a book on it, and then you got to actually flip the page, and then it lights up. Every time you flip the page, it gives it a pulse. Okay, so a lantern with a book on it and a comparator right behind it actually does different signals for how many pages are in the book and which page you're on. Now I'm on page one right now, and you can see that the first light is lit up. Now if I go to page two, the second light lights up, three to the fourth, so on and so forth, because I have 15 pages in this one. Now, if I were to take this book and put the book with three pages on it, and I read that one, see how it's only got three? If I turn the page, it's going to go all the way up there because it's only two. It has to go from page one, two to three to get to the end of it. All right. Super, super useful to use. Now, the daylight detector is something totally different. This actually detects how much daylight um, it's actually receiving. So it's kind of like it tells you the time of day that it is. Now there are two things. This is actually uh, testing the amount of light, and this is testing the, basically the amount of dark. All right. Now if we were to set the time to something else, time set, let's put it at uh, uh, 1500. We'll do that. Changes it to night, and now it's not giving out a signal anymore. Now if it does change like a, a different signal strength. Actually, let's just go ahead and light this up. Okay, the thing about this is it actually puts off a different amount of signal for how strong the daylight is. Now, I forgot that I have daylight times turned off, so let's do game rule, do daylight, do daylight cycle, and put it to true. Okay, now that's going to start moving. I'm actually going to make it a little bit later, so let's do time set, um, let's do 2200. I got to put a space in there. There we go. Nope, not 2200. Should be 22,000. There we go. So. Now this is the part where the sun, the moon is starting to set and the sun is going to start coming up and you're going to see that it's going to see the changes in light and it's going to, going to give a different signal strength. So let's just wait here until the sun barely starts to come up and then you can see the signal strength change. Oh, right there. That was really quick. I didn't have to wait at all. I didn't edit that at all. So now it's just at the signal strength of one and then in a few seconds it's actually going to go to two because the sun comes up a little bit higher. Should be any time now. There you go. There's two. Yeah, and you wait a little bit more, and it's going to go all the way up. And it just keeps going, keeps going, keeps going until it gets to 15. All right, last but not least component is TNT. This is the one that people probably have some of the most fun with. Um, TNT, if you don't know, is it explodes. It's dynamite. So you power it, and it blows up. It's back up a little bit. Now, with uh, when one point, I think it was 1.15 came out, uh, whenever uh, TNT blows up, it actually doesn't destroy the blocks, and it actually makes it so you can get all of your blocks back. This is super useful if you want to do an automatic TNT, like, flying machine, where it just drops a bunch of TNT, which we'll talk about at some other day. But yeah, this is, this is a really good way to mine, and you don't lose any of the uh, blocks that are down there. I hope you enjoyed this video covering the very basics of redstone components. Next time, we'll dig a little deeper and learn a little more. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and feel free to leave a comment. See you later.